Greetings, Ray Carnicelli here. I just wanted to send a message to the friends of LAX904 and say thank you. Uh, whether you contributed financially or you helped facilitate our broadcast or our activities, uh, you make it possible. Uh, it's not easy. There's a lot going on. I never expected uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago that it would be this busy in the lacrosse world with Jacksonville University, Flagler College, a little bit of UNF, all of the kids from 904 land that are playing at Division 1, 2, 3 and MCLA. It's almost high school season. It's just a lot to cover, not to mention the national lacrosse scene that people are interested in as well. Uh, but I, I love doing it. So this week, Friday night, I'll be at Flagler College. They play Palm Beach Atlantic. I will broadcast that game. The uh, link is below. Last year, it was a one goal loss for Flagler College and Flagler College is a lot better. Their game last night, last week against Embry-Riddle, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I feel like Flagler is going to come up big and win this game, possibly even win it big. So tune in uh, Friday, and then Sunday morning we'll recap it. Uh, Jacksonville University, you know, we came off the Hopkins game last week, and as I wrote in the newsletter, um, I was a little surprised that, uh, you know, Hopkins was able to dominate in the second half. You know, face-offs are so crucial, and the goalie play uh, out of Hopkins was just outstanding. Carcaterra last week on the radio show talked about 100% between your goalie save percentage and your face-off percentage trying to get above 100%. And you look at that number for uh, Hopkins, and it was, uh, it was pretty impressive. So, you know, uh, Nathan Capp's done a good job against Naso last year uh, uh, in the Duke game. So we'll see how that turns out. The weather is going to be a little iffy against Duke on Saturday. But uh, this attack for Duke is special. Uh, McAdory, number two, he's quick. He's not big, but he just sprints to spots. Uh, then you've got Brendan O'Neill, who's a big, giant Tasmanian devil with a lot of skill. And then Dyson Williams is just a finisher. His finishing shooting percentage is insane. He had seven goals against High Point this week. Uh, and they're all different. Those three guys are really different. But I think they play into the strengths of Jacksonville's defense. I, th I feel really good, a lot better than I did a couple weeks ago. I feel really good about the close defense. Um, Hopkins initiated the offense a lot from the midfield. And surprisingly, the Jacksonville short stick defensive middies, for whatever reason, struggled a little bit. But I really think that the combination of the, uh, the goal scorers and the shooters predominantly being at the attack position and having those short stick defensive middies able to help uh, on those uh, three big guys uh, is going to play a little bit into Jacksonville's hands. Uh, the goalie play, once again, is going to be key. You've got a Division three transfer in Helm for Duke who's playing out of his mind. So we're going to have to shoot a little bit better, find better spots, and finish stronger. Face-off, goalie play as usual. Those second mid midfielders for Jacksonville getting a little more experience. And then you think about the first middies for, for JU. Got to get them the ball. Got to really uh, value the possessions. You know, Marshall McGuire, we saw what Brandon Galloway can do. And, um, you know, Ethan Lamond, we know what he can do. So it's all going to come down to possessions and those skill positions, the goalie play. Uh, Duke is special, and I mentioned they're kind of on this vengeance uh, tour this year, but as Coach Galloway has mentioned, so is Jacksonville. They have a lot to prove, and I feel like if the game can slow down a little bit, I don't know if we want to get in a, a track meet with Duke. Maybe, maybe the coaching staff for Jacksonville feels good about that, but I think we got to stretch out possessions and, and use the shot clock. Uh, Coach Galloway mentioned that three of the Hopkins goals came in short time in the shot clock, so finishing those possessions will be key. But regardless, I'm excited about the game. It's another opportunity to see you know, that Jacksonville attack with Griner and Watson and Intrieri. I don't know the status of Waldbaum. I, I don't ask. Uh, he'll be there when he's there, and I hope he's ready for conference play. Uh, we all want the, the wins and early in the season, but it really needs. Uh, we need to look at it from a standpoint of get better every week. As I mentioned uh, to Quint a couple of weeks ago on the radio show, this team's going to be so much better in a month. Regardless of where they started, if they started here, they're going to be here. If they started here, they're going to be here. I, I feel really good about the way this season's going to play out because the roster's really good at all positions. More experience out of the midfield, 
get those guys into the offense a little bit more, and uh, they're gonna be they're gonna be good. They're gonna be good. I, 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 this week's gonna be tough. Don't get me wrong, but with Marist and High Point coming up before conference play, there's a lot of wins coming up very soon. I really feel good about that. Uh, I kind of been shunning the high school talk only because they they're all out there practicing, the working hard, the coaches are giving me updates, but uh, the games haven't started yet. They're getting ready to start, and I'm so excited to announce our first two broadcasts. I tweeted it out, but we're going to have Pope from Georgia, one of the top teams in Georgia, coming over to play bowls. That'll be our first game. I think that's the 23rd of February, but check down below in the newsletter. And then uh, the Ponte Vedra Creek side. Rivalry. We've had some amazing games. I can think of three in particular. Rivalry on the River, the Mana Wilhelm winning uh, the district at Ponte Vedra, and then going way back, can't believe it's been 10 years, in 2013 I called uh, the Holy Applegate game. Uh, Ryan to Eric to Scott Applegate to win that district championship. What will this uh, year's game? And I've got about four or five I'm lining up, you know, getting airtime on the radio station with basketball and everything else that they have going on. It's a little challenging, but we're gonna make sure we bring you eight or 10, at least, really good high school games. Uh, trying to track all of the kids in college who are doing amazing things, it's gonna get a lot harder. Uh, and you know, we saw Ashton Wood score a goal for Mercer before he had an injury last week. Uh, we saw Dylan Ruprich win some uh, face-offs at Wingate. And the, the guys are getting out there and I'll continue to track it follow it and try to pass on that information to you. So once again, I just wanted to send a brief message of thank you to the friends of LAX904. Follow me on Twitter at LAX904. Shoot me a note. I love hearing from everybody. Uh, I'm excited to be out at Jacksonville this coming Saturday at noon for the Whiteout. Uh, until then, have a good one.